there are many retail and wholesale central bank digital currency or CBDC projects initiated by central banks across the world. Accordingly, we will be discussing on Bank for International Settlements survey on CBDCs. Nine out of 10 central banks are exploring CBDCs and more than half are now developing or running experiments. In particular, work on retail CBDCs has moved to more advanced stages. Both COVID-19 and the emergence of stable coins and other cryptocurrencies have accelerated the work on CBDCs, especially in advanced economies. Their central banks say that financial stability has increased in importance as a motivation for their CBDC involvement. Globally, more than two thirds of central banks consider that they are likely to or might possibly issue a retail CBDC in either the short or medium term. Work on wholesale CBDCs is increasingly driven by reasons related to cross border payments efficiency. Central banks consider CBDCs as capable of alleviating key pain points such as the limited operating hours of current payment systems and the length of current transaction chains. CBDC is central bank issued digital money denominated in the national unit of account and it represents a liability of central bank. If the central bank digital currency is intended for use by the general public. It is referred to as a general purpose or retail CBDC. As such, it offers a new option to the general public for storing value and making payments. CBDC is different from existing forms of cashless payment instruments for consumers and businesses such as credit transfers, direct debits, cash payments, and e-money, as it represents a direct claim on a central bank rather than the liability of private financial institution. In contrast to retail CBDCs, a wholesale CBDC targets a different group of end users, namely financial institutions. A wholesale CBDC is similar to today's central bank reserves and settlement accounts in that it is intended for the settlement of large interbank payments or to provide central bank money to settle transactions of digital tokenized financial assets in new infrastructures. Cryptocurrencies or crypto assets were defined in the survey as private digital assets with their own currency unit of account, such as Bitcoin and Ethereum. Cryptocurrencies do not represent a claim on a central bank, which makes them different from CBDCs. Stable coins such as Tether and USD coin are a category of cryptocurrencies that aim to maintain a stable value by type their value to one or more assets, such as the fiat currency, a commodity, or another cryptocurrency. At the end of 2021, stable coins constitute a relatively small proportion of cryptocurrencies with a market capitalization of $175 billion, or just over 6% of the value of all cryptocurrencies. Yet they have a much higher share in trading volumes. Moreover, 
given that they are designed to maintain a stable value. Stable points may have a higher potential than other unbacked crypto assets to be used for payments or to store value. As such, they have attracted considerable attention from central banks, regulators, and standard setters. This picture demonstrates share of central banks actively engaged in some form of CBDC work grew to 90%. Data show that central banks are particularly interested in retail CBDCs. This depicts running a pilot almost doubled from 14% to 26%. Also, 62% are conducting experiment or proof of concept. Further, almost one-fifth of central banks are developing or testing a retail CBDC, which is twice the share of central banks building or piloting a wholesale CBDC. This figure shows more than 70% of central banks engaged in some form of CBDC work are considering a two-tiered model. Activities where many central banks see a potential role for their private sector include know your customer, anti-money laundering or suppression of financing of terrorism, and retail payments. Central banks of advanced economies and emerging markets have different motivations for considering issuing a retail CBDC. Retail CBDC work in advanced economies is driven mainly by domestic payments efficiency, payment safety, and financial considerations as shown in this figure. Accordingly, domestic payment efficiency, payment safety, and financial stability are also important drivers for the CBDC work in emerging markets. However, their CBDC engagement is, above all, driven by financial inclusion related motivations. Financial inclusion is a less important driver for wholesale than those for CBDCs in retail, in both advanced economies and emerging markets. Further, cross-border payment efficiency remain a key motivation for wholesale CBDCs, both in advanced economies and in emerging markets. This shows Long transaction chains and limited operating hours are key frictions that CBDCs could address. Generally, advanced economies were more likely than emerging markets to select most of these frictions. This demonstrates central banks in the Bahamas, China, the Eastern Caribbean Currency Union and Nigeria have issued or are piloting a live retail CBDC and it is likely that other jurisdictions will follow in the foreseeable future. About 68% of central banks consider that they are likely to or might possibly issue a retail CBDC in the short or medium term. This depicts a subset of central banks that has become more likely to issue a CBDC since 2018 includes both advanced economies and emerging markets central banks. This development may be driven partly by the COVID-19 pandemic, which accelerated the digitization of payments. Issuance of a CBDC requires a legal framework that provides central banks 
with the authority to do so. Accordingly, this graph shows, compared with last year, the share of central banks with such a legal authority increased from 18% to 26%. Cryptocurrencies are mainly used by niche groups, as demonstrated in this picture, and for cross-border payments. Further, market capitalization of cryptocurrencies grew by 3.5 times in 2021 to $2.6 trillion. Out of all stablecoin types, type A, or single currency stable coins are perceived as having the highest potential to become a widely accepted and used method of payment, both by advanced economies and emerging markets. About 70% of central banks are looking into the potential impact of stable coins on monetary and financial stability. Notably, the share has dropped slightly among those who also participate in the survey in 2019 and 2020. Multi-year G20 program is underway to make cross-border payments faster and cheaper, as well as more transparent and accessible. CBDCs would play an important role here, according to the respondents, especially in terms of shortening current transaction chains and providing longer operating hours. Indeed, between Block 19 of G20 program is tasked with exploring how to factor an international dimension into CBDC design. The Committee on Payments and Market Infrastructure, in collaboration with Bank for International Settlements, Innovation Hub, IMF, and World Bank, will deliver a report to the G20 in July 2022, in which they identify and analyze options for accessing and interlinking CBDCs with a view to improving cross-border payments. Reference for today's presentation is from Bank for International Settlement paper number 125, team BIC survey on central bank digital currencies. Thanks for watching.